Hi, this is Rob Morton with Tucker Christian Church. I'm a minister at uh, Tucker Christian, and this is the uh, latest in our Wednesday Bible study on 1 Peter. <clears throat> been studying 1 Peter for the past few weeks now, and we've uh, gotten down to verses 23, 24, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's what we're going to take a look at today. So I hope you're doing well. It's a rainy, cold day outside. I know up north they're getting some snow, and uh, they're going to have a white Christmas up there. Down here, we're going to have a rainy Christmas, at least for today anyway. So hope that you are inside and warm and and enjoying the holiday season so far, uh, no matter what you've got going on. These few verses that we're going to take a look at today are kind of uh, a therefore that Peter's writing here. Peter, in uh, this first chapter of First Peter, has told us that he wants us to be holy as God is holy. God has given us an incredible salvation through Jesus Christ, through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. We have a hope that will last forever. We have an inheritance with God. We have strength. We have peace. We have all of these wonderful, incredible benefits from the salvation that God is giving us through Jesus Christ. And Peter has talked about that. And in verse 22, he starts off the, uh, the sentence with the word, now that. Now that. Well, the words, now that. Whenever we see the words, now that, or therefore, or other words like that, we pay attention because Peter's about to give us some instruction, and that's exactly what he's going to do here. Since we have this great salvation that God has given us, we should therefore, <clears throat> and then he's going to go in in verses 22 through 25 and tell us what we should do. And this is one of the most important commandments that uh, the Bible contains for us. Uh, what Jesus, when he was asked what the two greatest commandments in the of the Ten Commandments were, or in the Old Testament, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with your heart, your mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, Peter's echoing that here. He's told us already that we should love God and that we should be holy and that our lives should be uh, set aside for God. And now that uh, we have done that, now that we have shown our love for God and made ourselves holy, we are going to, and he'll give us the answer. Let me read to you from verses 23 through 25, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. This is what Peter writes. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have a sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you've been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. So, this is what Peter says. Now that. Okay, so he wants us to do something here. That's what now that means. Now that you've purified yourselves by obeying the truth, love each other. That's what he's commanding us here. We have obeyed the truth. We have purified ourselves. He's covered that in previous verses. We have become holy as God is holy. And since we have done that already, we are to love each other. Now, he says it in two different ways here. You should have a sincere love for each other. That means an honest love for one another. We should care for each other deeply. Now, he's talking to uh, those who are in the church. He's writing this to several churches in the, uh, the old Roman province of Asia. That's modern-day Turkey. And he's telling them that they are to love one another within the church. They're to care sincerely for one another but then he doesn't stop there he says uh, love one another deeply from the heart so this love isn't just a, a, a tenuous commitment of one to another it is a deep heartfelt commitment to one another that's what Peter wants for us here and I think that's an important message for the church our duty as a church isn't so much to have the best worship service 
or to have the most up-to-date programs. It's not necessarily to have the uh, most beautiful buildings. It's not necessarily to be the sophisticated, hip place to be. Our duty as a church, foremost, is to worship God and love one another deeply from the heart. Those other things are important. I'm not minimizing the idea of the things that the church does to reach out into the community or worship, anything like that. But our first and primary goal should be to love God and to love each other. And he tells us that uh, there's, a, there's a special reason for this. Because we're been born again, not of imperishable seed, but through the living and enduring word of God. We're born again, and we are now imperishable. It means we're never going to fade away. He quotes uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 through 8. In verse 24 and 25, uh, Peter quotes Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 through 8. He says, All people are like grass, the glory is like the flowers of the field. Grass withers and the flowers fall. Well, that's us. We're temporary here. We only last a short time. We're like those uh, flowers that we plant in the spring, maybe like tulips. Those are one of the prettiest flowers that we have in the spring. They're a harbinger of summer. They come up about late April, May, depending on where you live in the country. They bloom out. They're beautiful, and, and we enjoy them, and we look at them, and then just after a week, maybe two weeks, they're gone. They're gone, and it's time for something else to take their place. Well, that's how we are as humans. We're temporary here. This life does not last very long. We get 70 or 80 or 90 years. Uh, if we're fortunate, some get far, far less. But that's it. That's it. If you compare our lifespan here on earth with the generations and generations and generations that have come before us, our, our time on this earth is just small. It's short. It's like the glory of the flowers that are here today and are gone tomorrow. And that's it. We're temporary. You know, you're probably not going to be remembered once you die by maybe anyone but your grandkids. That's kind of a depressing thought in a way. I know. I'm you know, not trying to be a downer here today, but once we pass on, Who's going to remember us? Our kids will, certainly. Our grandkids will, certainly. Our close friends, our parents. If we pass before our parents, God forbid. But beyond that, very few people are known beyond that, that second generation after they've lived. I remember my grandma and grandpa Bell. On, that's, that was my mom's maiden name, Bell. I remember them, but I don't remember my mom's grandparents. I vaguely remember my my grandfather on my dad's side. I never knew my grandmother on my dad's side. And I certainly didn't know my dad's grandparents. We were forgotten. But we've got we've got something that gives us hope here, and that is that we're reborn. And we're going to be imperishable. That's a bit of a depressing thought that we're, that, we're, that we're only temporary and we're not going to be remembered when we go. But, but we've been reborn again. This life isn't all there is. Our existence here isn't all there is. We're going to be imperishable. Imperishable. That's the word that was preached to us according to verse 25. The word of the Lord endures forever and because it does we will endure forever as well this life is very temporary it's important we should enjoy it we should appreciate it we should celebrate it but we should also understand that we're not going to be here for very long and while we're here our allegiance should be to God and to each other to God and to each other that should be our focus here. We should love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. And within the church, we should love each other deeply from 
the heart, and no other allegiance should come before that. Yes, we love our families. We're devoted to them. They're, I'm not minimizing our family relationships. But within the family of God, there should be a deep love for one another, a deep commitment to one another that transcends all other loyalties. We've just come through an election that has torn everybody apart. Our country has been rent asunder by our, our politicians. And you know I have, um, those of you who know me know I have strong political opinions and those don't change, haven't changed. But I'm disgusted by how our country has been absolutely rended asunder during this election cycle and during this pandemic. Our allegiance to one another has to be higher than our allegiance to anything else, even our political affiliation, our whatever affiliation you may have. We need to be devoted to one another. We need to be committed to one another. That means a couple of things, I think. It means we have to be there for one another when there are difficult times. We have to support each other when we are down Financially, we need to be supporting each other in that way. If we're down emotionally, if we're grieving, we need to support each other. Whenever we have needs, we need to be helping each other meet those needs as best we can. We have to be devoted to one another. We have to be devoted to fellowship. We've got to be developing those friendships and loving one another. Even when times are good, we should be loving one another and enjoying each other's company. That's important. In order to do that, we need to show an interest in one another. We need to listen to one another. We need to pay attention. Somebody comes into church and and they're not their usual bubbly self. We need to reach out and talk to them. We need to get to know each other well enough that we can see when somebody's down or when somebody's having a hard time. I think that's part of what Peter's talking about here with loving one another deeply being devoted to enough to one another that we care enough to listen and that we care enough to notice and we understand what's going on in each other's lives. That's so important. We're here for such a short time. Instead of focusing on things that divide us, we need to be focusing on loving one another and caring for one another within the church. That's what God loves, and that's what God blesses. I hope that you will show that kind of devotion to your, to your fellow Christians over this next week, to your fellow churchmates over this next week. If you're going to church, if you're with us in person, spend some time before or after the service just talking to people and just getting to know them. Go up to somebody maybe that you haven't talked to in a long time or somebody that you don't know very well and just say, how are you doing? How was your week? What was uh, was good about it? What uh, what was you know, What's going on with you? Spend a little time getting to know that person. That's how we show love to one another from the heart. If you're not coming to church, if you are sheltering in place at home, reach out with a phone call. Reach out with a card. Send them a handwritten card. It did and write it out. Don't do the email thing. That's okay. Emails are okay. But it shows so much care and concern when we write out a card instead of just typing an email. Show that love and concern to one another. Be devoted to one another. For we have been married, reborn of imperishable seed. Not perishable. Because the living and enduring word of God is remaking us. I hope things are going well for you. I hope that uh, you're uh, staying safe. Hope that you're feeling good. Hope this virus hasn't infected your household and uh, that uh, things are going well for you. Make an extra effort over the next week to reach out to somebody you know needs a little bit of a, of a touch. Now, next week is Christmas. I won't be posting a devotion next week for Christmas or the following week for New Year's. So if I don't uh, if I don't see you before then, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I hope your New Year's celebration is great. 
and uh, that you just have an enjoyable holiday. So God bless all of you. Enjoy the, the next couple of weeks that are coming up and uh, just just take some time to show some love to those of uh, those of your brothers and sisters maybe that you haven't seen in a while. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.